In this video, we're going to talk about some of the more difficult cases to, uh, for interpreting ionic compounds. And that's when polyatomic ions are included and transition metals. Remember, transition metals can have lots of multiple different types of charges. So I can't look at an iron and know exactly what charge it is. So we'll walk through two examples to highlight this. So here I have a chemical formula. And I can recognize my chemical symbol here as iron. Um, and this right here is a polyatomic ion. And I might not have this memorized, but I can recognize that I have more than one um, non-metal in my chemical formula. So if I recognize it's a polyatomic ion, and I go check it on the polyatomic ion chart, I can see this is cyanide. And based on our rules before, just saying the cation name and the anion name should be enough, except for that tricky thing about um, our transition metals, that they can have different charges. So I don't know if this is iron plus two or plus three or plus four. So um, looking at my chemical formula, I've got to figure that out first. Um, so each of my cyanide anions have a negative one charge. And I determined that by looking at my polyatomic ion chart. So then if I had um, a, one of these, I would have a, a plus one iron. My iron has to be positive, it's the cation. But since I had three of these, I can think of this as a reverse crisscross rule and make that a plus three. So my iron has a plus three charge. I'm going to communicate that in writing out its name in Roman numerals. So I'd write iron, parentheses, Roman numeral three, cyanide. So I'm using the name from the polyatomic ion chart for cyanide. Iron, I'm using the name of the element. And then I'm using Roman numerals to indicate the charge of the ion, of the iron. So if I see something written out as a name, I can interpret it into a chemical formula. Um, and if I have a transition metal, I'm gonna need this charge in parentheses to know um, exactly which version of nickel I'm dealing with. So nickel has a chemical formula Ni. Hydroxide is not an element. The hydrox, you don't have anything with hydrox in the name. So that tells me it's probably a polyatomic ion. If I look at my chart, in fact, I find hydroxide. It's OH and it has a negative one charge. Now, how these will combine really depends on the charge of that nickel. So I use this um, Roman numeral one to determine that this is a plus one. So now I need to look at how will plus one and negative one combine. Well, they should combine in a one-to-one -one ratio to equal zero. So this will be nickel hydroxide. 